Designing a New Learning Environment Individual Assignment Number 5 Hi, my name is Rose and this is my journal article reflection. I've divided my presentation into three parts. The first part is about the things that I've learned from reading this assignment. These are interesting to me because I found them parallel to my own experiences. The second part of my presentation will be about the article itself, which talks about e-portfolios. And lastly, I will look at the application or implications of this article in education as well as for my own team. However, I've decided to embed item 1 into item 2. This means, as I'm going through the actual article, I will highlight those items that I found most interesting to me. Let's start. The article is titled, When Cloud Computing Meets with Semantic Web, A New Design for ePortfolio Systems in the Social Media Era. The authors of this article are Paul Kim, Chen Ki Ng, and Gloria Lim, all from Stanford University. In the article, the definition of portfolio states that it is a collection of items and artifacts by a person or student which is used in future to present and or to reflect upon. The definition of ePortfolio Systems is a network application that allows this collection to be shared with different people. The adoption of ePortfolios is quite widespread. Over half of U.S. higher education institutions have adopted some form of ePortfolios. There are four different approaches to ePortfolio implementation. The first is homegrown proprietary systems, which are money-based. The second is a free publicly available system, or open source. The third are licensed systems or commercial systems. And lastly, they are the common HTML language editor type. The limitations of ePortfolio systems are that most of the time, the scale and sustainability of that system is always in question. Data is not always transportable. And most importantly, user adoption faces many types of barriers. In an ideal world, the advantages of ePortfolio systems is that it creates a collaborative learning space. And this fosters peer assessment and self-planning and managing of instruction. The attributes of a successful ePortfolio system is the ease of use, long-term sustainability, all sorts of advanced features, and a robust integrated technology architecture. This allows for lifelong support of standards and transportability. According to the article, the solution is a private public data index system, or PRPL for short. The first attribute of this solution is that all items are stored in personal clouds. I found this as one of the most interesting topics that I could read in this article. It reminded me of a job that I did some time ago called the Osmosis Project where my students and interns were collecting their personal portfolios but there was no proper cloud computing available at that time. I wish I had read this article way back then. The second attribute of this PRPL system is that there is a PCB or personal cloud butler. This allows for all the items to be integrated using a semantic web-based visualization and intelligent search. To compare the traditional to this butler system, in this figure on the left, it shows that traditional systems require that the data or files be stored or copied into somebody's learning portal. This becomes extremely big in size, and it becomes difficult to manage in the long term. In contrast, the PCB system is merely an interface that collates different URLs 
from many different sources that are already pre-existing in a person's individual life and it allows that person to manage it in one place. This PRPL system has an X attribute. According to the authors, this means that the ePortfolio system can derive formal descriptions, it can facilitate knowledge management, and it can support and perform all sorts of different searches and learning needs. The second thing that I found really interesting about this PRPL system is that it is visual in nature. This reminds me about a project that I did some time ago in the Center for Industry of Research and Archives, where students' works in an international university were collated and collected as part of the university archives. Back then, there was no system as this, and it became extremely difficult to search and find old data because most of the works were in visual form. The third item that I found really interesting in this article is the proposal that the metadata that would be collected to tie into individual users would be from a person's individual personal cell phone. I find this interesting because it assumes that everybody owns a cell phone. This was interesting to me because I had designed a model of learning called Ask for Help back in 2004, which looked at mobile technology, specifically handphones or cell phones, as a way to uniquely identify people. The application of this PRPL system in education is endless. There are many things that we could look at and that we could try to find ways to adapt and adopt to make learning a lot more efficient. Closer to home, my own project team, Step by Step, which looks at solving technology phobia by stimulating technology philia, is something that I think would be able to benefit from this article. I look forward to using this new knowledge in my project and I'm really glad that I'm aware of new portfolio technologies and philosophies that were not existent in my previous jobs. I'm also looking forward to applying this new knowledge into my project with my team. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I wish you best in your own learning.